I usually give them maybe 10 minutes, 12 minutes to work on the introductory paragraph because it's the second part of the story, that explode a moment is where the details really come shining through and where the expression, that creative expression, really starts to flow, which is wonderful. And it is the first draft, so in working with the students, the first time you would do, the first day you would work with the students on this lesson is just the first draft. I, we don't expect them to write you know, an absolute Shakespeare masterpiece the first day. It's to start getting those ideas down on paper. And then they do a revision the next day after you would check and edit. So um, you would actually go through and check for all the grammatical errors and the spelling errors and then have them add more details the second day. So we're going to do explode a moment. And it's one of my favorite writing techniques that a teacher shared with me. And it's creating a photograph with words. So what you're doing in explode a moment, in explode a moment, It is a second by second, minute by minute description. And it's effective, it's really helpful in focus, so it helps with focus, it helps keep the story focused. It helps with sequence of events. So these are the skills. This is the skill set. Um, so skill would be sequence of events. Cause and effect. If something happens, the effect of that. This is really what makes it an effective teaching tool. Because often with writing, not only students, I, I sometimes do this too, trying to say too much and not being able to focus in on the idea. The explode a moment and having to share the description second by second and minute by minute really gives the student a direct focus and that direct sequence of events. What event led to the next, which led to the next, and so on rather than trying to make a story happen over two weeks' time, where then often they'll, they'll meander from one time period to the next and back and forth, and then they're changing tenses. They're writing some of it present tense. They're writing some of it past, and it can become, it can become really confusing and messy for them as well. This really helps to also to write in one tense only. This particular story is usually written in the past tense. And it's really helpful to focus on the past tense because with Creole, Creole doesn't really have past tense. Everything happens in the present moment. Past tense can be, it can be difficult. It's a challenge. And this writing, doing it moment by moment, helps the student to stay in one tense and can really help focus on that learning challenge. It gives them another tool to use. The other thing that was really interesting was many of the students, I shouldn't say many, a few, a few of the students, rather than being afraid of what was happening, with Tata Duende, there were several that decided to play with him. So they played marbles with him, and they were asking him to teach the guitar. So it's the idea that it doesn't have to be a violent story. It doesn't have to be a negative thing that happens. It could be trying to forge a new friendship in a very unlikely situation. So it's an interesting teaching tool that way. Um, there was one young lady who spoke about how sad the La Llorona was and how it just made her so sad to see someone sad and she decided to just speak with her and, 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 and treat her with kindness and they ended up being friends. Such a cool story. Um, another one decided, this was from last year, she decided that for Tata Duende, rather than wanting to cut the thumbs off of children that he saw that were maybe not the best behaved children, that maybe if he saw them lost in the forest, he, he could actually guide them back home. He could help them out. And that would change the relationship. So ex with exploding a moment, it really is a second by second 
description. Um, with, you know, I, uh, Tata Duende appeared at my window. He stepped through, and I, I, I glanced over my shoulder, wondering if I was seeing what I thought I, I was. And it, it was Tata Duende. He glared at me, the brim of his sombrero skimming beneath his eyes. I only saw the lower lashes. And then he opened his mouth, and his teeth were covered in green slime, and his breath smelled like 400 dirty baby diapers. <laughs> he took one small step forward, unsheathing his machete. I quickly held up my hands, showing him I had no thumbs. I tricked him. The ruse worked. Very carefully, I took a step back, feeling for the open door, which I knew was directly behind me. I slithered out the door down the hallway, knowing my brother was sleeping next door. My brother's tall, six foot four. Perhaps he could scare Tata Duende better than me. I crept down the hallway slowly. I glanced over my shoulder. Tata Duende was right behind. So that's an example, and that just came from my brain. Um, so the, the moment by moment, if you just take a moment, and what I was doing, actually, I know my eyes were open, but I was pretending my eyes were closed and I was picturing what was happening in my head. If you use that technique, it is so helpful for your writing. I do it all the time, picturing what I'm seeing. And, and not only what you're seeing, what are you feeling? I know that here, um, we, we call it goosebumps. You call, but you call it, you call it something else. Cold seed? Cold seed sometimes? Yeah? So I caught goosebumps, or my, my knees were knocking together with fear. My heart was palpitating. Uh, my, my, my mouth was so dry. I was so frightened I could not even speak. My eyes as big as dinner dishes. So you're giving all of those senses, not, not only what you're seeing, and what you're hearing. It might be the creak of a floorboard as he takes a step forward. It might be the, and you could even, you could even make up some words, you know, when he takes that machete out of the sheath, the swing. Even if you write down S V V I N G G G G in quotation marks, we're going to get that. It's swing. We can hear that in our head. So the idea of pulling that, you know, and, and unsheathe, that was one of the words the kids used. I thought that was awesome. He didn't say he pulled out the machete, he unsheathed the machete. Yes. Fantastic, you can picture that. So, it is now your time to do an explode a moment. And if you wish, you don't have to, but if, if you wish, when I teach it to the students, we all start with the same first sentence of the explode a moment paragraph. And we usually have it take place at night because night is just, it's more creepy than daytime. There's, there's more that can, that mysterious that can happen. So one night while I was, one night while I was, and you can do anything you want. One night while I was bathing my children. One night while I was reading a romance novel. One night while I was preparing to go out to the club. But one night while I was, any activity you want to be doing, that's in the blank, I met, and it'll be the character that you're writing about. I met Tata Duende, La Llorona, whatever, El Cadejo, whatever, whoever you're writing about, full stop. And then... Moment by moment, tell us what happened. Remembering about your five senses, what, it, what your body felt like when you saw them for the first time, how you reacted, thinking of the action that would take place, and just